Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for uh, a the ATA Engineering Webinar, System Simulation for Optimization of Heavy Equipment Design. I'm your host, Scott Tebow from ATA Engineering. Our presenter today will be Scott Kidney from our uh, Washington, D.C. area office in Hernand, Virginia. I'm going to first go through a quick introduction to ATA Engineering before turning over the presentation to Scott for the demonstration. So ATA Engineering is an employee-owned small business headquartered in San Diego, California, but with offices across the US. We have a full-time staff of almost 200, uh, most of us being degreed engineers. We serve a number of industries, providing high value engineering services to help our clients solve the toughest product design challenges. We work a lot in aerospace, especially launch of vehicles and satellites, but also robotics and controls, themed entertainment, defense, industrial and mining equipment, consumer products, and many other areas. We provide our services all over the world, but predominantly in the U.S. from our many U.S. offices in San Diego, Los Angeles, the Bay Area, Denver, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Huntsville, Alabama, where I myself am located, and Washington, D.C. area where Scott Kidney is located. Our services are mostly comprised of design, analysis, and test services, but we are also a Siemens Platinum Level solution partner providing Siemens software and uh, related services to customers nationwide. We provide uh, service and support for Siemens NX, SimCenter NASTRAN, BMAP, Star CCM Plus, SimCenter 1D, which includes the AIMSIM product, which is the subject of today's webinar, SimCenter 3D, Team Center, and many others. We are a certified expert partner with validated expertise in a number of Siemens products, and we are also the exclusive channel partner in North America for Siemens test and measurement hardware and software, data acquisition systems, signal conditioning equipment, and sensors, and related software, of course. For more information on all the products that uh, we provide from Siemens, you can visit us at ata-e.com, where you can find a wealth of resources, including white papers, presentations, uh, previously recorded webinars on AIM-SIM and other topics related to Siemens software, and much more. So we know that there are some trends that are driving innovation in today's heavy equipment market. These include regulations, especially more stringent noise regulation, which is driving the need for electric drive uh, heavy equipment so that you can operate in residential areas uh, at hours where you would not normally be able to operate with, uh, with diesel or diesel electric equipment. It constantly increasing emission standards, including for particulates and higher safety requirements. Today's market is also very global with increasing competition around the world. And there's going to be a balancing act between uh, creating products that can be sold globally versus meeting local requirements. There's also a desire on the part of customers for a more customer centric approach. Uh, they're not necessarily expecting everything to be customized but they definitely want products that are more directly suited to their specific needs. They want to control the cost of ownership and increase the productivity from each piece of equipment that they purchase. So what is SimCenter AIMSIM and how does it fit into this picture? Well, SimCenter AIMSIM is part of the uh, Siemens SimCenter portfolio of products that are used for mechanical simulation, uh, CFD simulation, electromagnetics, uh, and many, many others. And AIMSIM fits into the 1D and control simulation area. It is used for modeling entire systems, mechatronic systems, electrical systems, uh, combustion engines, hydraulics, and many, many more, uh, all interconnected as needed 
to create a working system model for your equipment. One of the purposes of having a 1D model for your heavy equipment is to be able to take multiple attribute optimization to support your machine performance engineering. This is trading off requirements for fuel economy and energy management versus structural integrity and durability, which leads to, uh, to guaranteed lifetime under realistic loading, that sort of thing. Uh, operability or interoperability and efficiency. People want productivity, reliability, reliability, but also comfort and safety for their operators. Uh, controlling and at the very least predicting noise and vibration to uh, directly drive driver comfort, but also comply with specific regulations and certifications. And also to feed data into control systems, which ultimately need to control this equipment. AIMSIM is a part of this process, allowing you to be more efficient and enable new insights in your system design. Where AIMSIM is applied in heavy equipment has to do with all of the individual subsystems of your, uh, of your device, whether it's an excavator, heavy truck, or whatnot. This could be the internal combustion engine itself, after treatment, transmission, thermal systems, vehicle dynamics, including noise, vibration, and harshness, electrical systems, pumps and compressors, hydraulic systems, fluid systems, heat exchangers, air conditioners, cabin comfort, and many, many more. What sets AIMSIM apart from other ways of modeling systems uh, is that it comes with a vast library of pre-built models or components. 48 libraries uh, with 6,500 multi-physics models. And these aren't, you know, hand waving, you know, spring and damper type of uh, simple models. These, can, these are very well validated models for specific components that are gonna end up in your equipment. These could be hydraulic pumps, they could be electric motors, batteries, uh, battery thermal management systems, um, various, uh, after treatment products, et cetera, for emissions. Um, all of them are available through these pre-built, pre-validated models. Uh, and you connect up the models in AIMSIM using kind of a Lego building block approach, and then apply the necessary uh, parameters to each of the components that you've selected. The result is a very complete model for your system with a a startling level of accuracy if you go about it right. Um, people sometimes think, and I admit I sometimes fall into this trap myself, that more sophisticated simulation is always going to give you a better answer. So, you know, I want more elements in my finite element model. I want more cells in my CFD model. I want to do time transient simulations instead of steady state. The system modeling approach in AIMSIM is the other direction. Include more parts of your system with these uh, comparatively simplistic but well-validated 1D components and the overall combination of these 1D components into an overall system will give you accurate results for the system as a whole. So uh, I'd like at this point to turn the uh, presentation over to Scott Kidney from our Herndon, Virginia office, who's going to be giving us a little bit more information on AIMSIM, but also showing us a live example uh, based on an excavator. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to walk through the hybridization of an uh, excavator swing motor. Uh, the objectives of this demonstration are, of course, to demonstrate AIMSIM in this particular application. And, uh, you know, what we're trying to do with um, this particular model is reduce, uh, reduce uh, fuel consumption, uh, recover more energy during uh, the operation of this hydraulic excavator. Uh, the solution we're going to develop is going to be uh, by replacing the hydraulic swing motor with a generator, an ultra capacitor to store the energy uh, throughout the, the digging cycle. And then, uh, of course, an electric motor uh, replacing the hydraulic motor. 
what we're going to show, of course, too, is uh, estimates in fuel economy savings and, uh, of course, productivity uh, using you know, a complete equipment simulator. So, as we get into the AIM SIM model, uh, just want to kind of note uh, there's a lot going on. We're, we're talking about a full hydraulic excavator simulation. Uh, just wanted to talk it over a little bit before you, you just see the model, but just kind of think of it broken up into uh, four different categories. Uh, just generally, you know, we're going to have a, a, a section of the model devoted to cycle and control. This is denoted by this pink area of the actual of, of the schematic. Uh, next up would be the combustion engine uh, denoted in the lower left -hand corner here. In the middle, with all the blue uh, uh, components and links, is going to be the, the hydraulic section uh, depicting the hydraulic actuation of the excavator. And then uh, upper right hand corner here in, in green, uh, once again, is going to be the mechanical structure. So all the masses, all the inertias, et cetera, that are being driven by the, uh, the hydraulics uh, for this particular model. So now I'm just going to switch over to AIMSIM and pull up the actual uh, the models that we're working with today. First up, I'm just going to show you a little bit about the software uh, just to, to familiarize yourself with it. Uh, it it's really broken up uh, into, uh, as you start off, into a, as, as you're developing your schematics and your equipment, uh, a, a sketch pane or a window here. And then there's really I see as five components, five different uh, steps to an analysis where first you sketch and sketching involves, you know, going through the libraries on the right. Uh, they're quite extensive. Today we're going to be working a lot with hydraulics. I wanted to just uh, pull that up and show you, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, I guess, components such as flow sources, uh, uh, restrictors, cylinders, pumps, and then just a lot of different control valves, et cetera, associated with this. Uh, you know, to, to build a schematic such as you're going to see here, it's as simple as taking uh, the, the component you want, dropping it, say, on your window here. Once it's there, and I'm going to delete this one I just created. You can then just click on the port of each of your components once you have them placed and hook them up by just clicking on the ports and drawing a line and hooking it all up. Once a component is fully uh, modeled into the system that you're trying to uh, model, that that is when you're gonna see the color change uh, almost inverse. And this is indicating that your, your system is fully connected and you can move on. Uh, next up in your modeling uh, is it's called submodel. And uh, what happens here is you can choose the mathematical, uh, I guess, the mathematics behind each of these components, whether it's simple or quite involved or complex. So uh, in submodeling, you're choosing how each of these components is represented and, and the mathematical representation, how developed and deep. Uh, that is, if it's if if the representation is simple or quite complex. Uh, from there, you would move into uh, parameter. Let's see. Let me just uh, set the sub models quick. From there, you would move into parameters where you could actually set uh, the parameters of various components. Uh, but and and for example, here we're, we're looking at a, a simple pump, but uh, for this simple pump. Uh, you know, the pump displacement, we could just key in uh, a value that would represent our particular application and typical pump speed. Uh, an example here, too, would be the restrictor. What are the uh, the characteristics of the restrictor, et cetera? So this is allowing you to define the library components to uh, match your exact application. Uh, so just the, the idea is to Keep in mind is that just because they're library components doesn't mean they're uh, you know they're not changeable. 
they they are completely changeable. You can set them up uh, based on your particular system with the correct parameters you have in your system to get the model to behave exactly how you're how how it how it should be modeling your particular system. So from there, you can move into simulation. And this is actually where you would run this this particular simulation and uh, get the uh, information uh, out of it as far as how does the system perform. This is going to fade off because I don't have any information. But then from there, uh, once you do run the simulation, there are a lot of different parameters on any one of these components that can be plotted. And you simply plot this information by dragging and dropping uh, the, the, the particular parameter onto the window and see what's happening. So there's a lot of other types of, of course, post-processing available uh, in AIMSIM. And we're gonna see it in the more, uh, you know, more defined uh, excavator example that we have coming forward here. But th those are the five, sketch, submodeling, parameter, simulation and post-processing are five steps to this analysis. So <clears throat> switching over to the hydraulic excavator example, again, we saw uh, a slide on just the different sections as far as uh, control again on the left-hand side here. And then we have the, the engine uh, modeling, hydraulic in the middle. And then over here on the right are gonna be the the modeling of the uh, of the actual upper structure as far as the masses and inertias of all the modes. So just to let me uh, start by just zooming in a little bit. So this model, just to um, show, you know, that the, the engine model is made up of an ECU and then a PID uh, to control the speed of the engine. And of course, this is being fed into a gearbox with a, a load and then a gear reduction. So as you're working through your model with uh, AIMSIM, you can you know easily identify what's going on. They're not mathematical equations or blocks or anything. They're very graphical uh, user intuitive icons that you can link together and put together. Um, as, as far as uh, uh, this particular, uh, uh, area and others you're going to see a lot of um a lot of different links with letters the letters are going to be uh inputs from the control side and what we do have is a state chart which controls the entire digging sequence of the excavator uh from start to finish for one cycle and that state chart is uh, pushing the commands through just simple PID controllers for the actuation of each of the different uh, parts of the uh, excavator as far as the boom, stick, bucket, and, and swing, et cetera. So just to look at the model a little bit closer to, uh, so we do have each of those four functions modeled here. Uh, off of the gear reduction, we do have uh, a multitude of pumps. Uh, just working on the upper side here, this is really the, the pump working uh, or providing flow to the, the, the stick cylinder and also the bucket cylinder. Uh, you, these pumps here are actually load sensing. So you have uh, the, the, the load sensing actuator, all the load sensing valves, uh, shuttle valves, et cetera, coming off of the servo valves, which are actually determining the the flow and the, I should say, the position of both the stick and the bucket for the dig sequence uh, off of the servo valves at the end of the end of the lines. You do have the uh, cylinder cylinders for the stick and the bucket modeled here. But as you can see, uh, you know, very easy, very readable. Uh, if you're familiar with hydraulic circuits, um, as far as the models and how they're put together, uh, again, you know, these are. Uh, all these, this is almost acting as a relay valve here. Just wanted to point out, you know, once you're in, uh, once you've sketched this, selected your sub models you want to work with, uh, then you can go in parameters and, you know, put your proper uh, hydraulic settings as far as relief pressures, uh, differential pressures at maximum opening, et cetera, uh, to, to match, you know, what your, 
your physical system, uh, how that's that's how how that's set up. So, <clears throat> moving on, just moving down the schematic, uh, there's another uh, load sensing pump, and that particular pump is the exact same schematic as what we saw before, uh, with relief valves, et cetera, flowing into a servo valve, but um, this particular instance, this this pump is only uh, providing flow for both the left and right uh, boom cylinders. Uh, very similar model as before, and you know various uh, again relief valves, depending on how your uh, physical system is set up and what the pressures are. You know what's the you know what's characteristics about the pump, etc. So. Third motor uh, with this uh, initial hydraulic system uh, runs the swing motor. And this is the section that we're going to talk about uh, replacing and hybridization uh, today, where we would remove this particular pump and hydraulic motor uh, from the schematic and replace it with the uh, ultra capacitor and an electric motor. So uh, because it is a, a motor versus a hydraulic cylinder, the hydraulic schematics, of course, a little bit different. But uh, you know, very similar uh, set of components with with respect to pressure relief, et cetera. But then we do have uh, a gear reduction into the upper structure to provide the swing uh, for the excavator. So, and then just you know, we've talked about all the functions at this point. Just looking at uh, you know how some of these various joints, et cetera, are set up. Uh, as far as the, you you can define the model uh, with respect to uh, orientation and inertia, et cetera, as far as mass. Um, let's see if I can uh, just know uh, one particular area. I can't find it at the moment, but uh, all those uh, terms are taken care of or taken into account for a particular simulation. Let me just zoom this back out here and run this run the uh, simulation. <clears throat> so when I move in the simulation, this is ready to go. I can run it just so you see how fast it moves. So this is a, a simple schematic of the upper structure of the hydraulic excavator, and you can see for uh, uh, you know, just a 20 second cycle here, you know, it solves relatively fast. It goes through a 20 second cycle and in about 16 seconds, so very fast. You can make changes uh, to your your hydraulic circuit, of course. Uh, you know, change various parameters. Resolve, rerun very easily, and just see almost immediately uh, how those changes uh, have affected your uh, your particular excavator. Uh, with this particular uh, solution sequence, there is an animation uh, that you can set up as far as you know. It, you can actually, instead of this all being uh, charts and graphs and numbers, you can uh, take a solid model bring it in as an animation, hook up the output uh, and have the output variables referenced as far as what's the position of the stick, boom, bucket, swing motor, et cetera, for the digging sequence and see if it really makes all sense. So so for an example here, this is from the simulation. You can see um, easily that the digging sequence is properly executed uh, on the excavator, everything is moving as it should be, and it's you know, it's 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 moving correctly for what would be uh, expected from the state chart. Uh, any of these again variables that we're looking at, uh, you know, one of the things here, if I click on on the engine, you can take a look at uh, fuel consumption, total fuel consumption. It's listed right here. Uh, once you see a variable. It's as easy as dragging and dropping it onto the large sketch window, window, and you can see throughout the full 
20 second simulation, what's your fuel consumption? If you want to, um, as far as just, you know, just move it along to a certain time, et cetera, you can easily get feedback quite easily and, and read off certain points on the graph. It's very user centric as far as getting data off of an analysis and into your hands and uh, and analyzing it. So the things for uh, today that we'd love to, to discuss, of course, are total fuel consumption. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, relief valve uh, as far as relief as far as energy losses, and uh, we have a a plot here that shows uh, relief valve flow rates uh, in, in as far as the swing motor. Uh, so of course, flow through a relief valve is energy loss. And then if you look at energy as far as summed over the entire digging cycle, how much energy uh, loss is uh, summed up and over, overall loss in that cycle for the swing motor. The other way to take a look at this is to take a look at uh, is to actually use a tool called the Power Energy Activity Tool, which can look at uh, all the the peak losses for the excavator. And as I click these off here, you can see uh, a green box point to uh, which component this is referencing. And this list, uh, once I go into this tool, is actually sorted from peak, from max to min uh, energy loss. And I can just take the top nine here, and you can see first up are going to be uh, cylinder friction for the boom. Next up, cylinder friction for the bucket. Next up is the stick. And then from there, it's losses in this servo valve for the booms. And then start uh, what starts coming up here, of course, are the relief valves for the swing motor, uh, servo valve for the bucket. I'm sorry, that's servo valve for the stick. And then uh, the bucket's the next one. You can plot these. And you can see, uh, Again, like I said, it's it's sort of max and min. It's tough sometimes to see uh, based off of the uh, based off of the, the the nomenclature what exactly it is. If you do have if you ever forget which one this is, you can take a course look at uh, 20-2, highlight it, and take a look at your schematic and say you know what is this. The other thing too that's kind of nice is, is throughout the entire digging sequence, it captures and sums the energy losses and displays it as a as a bar chart. And you can see exactly at what time in the dig, digging sequence do the losses occur and, and look at it. So for today's uh, demonstration, of course, we're gonna be looking at the swing motor and hybridization of, of that circuit. And that uh, is really referenced by uh, these particular parameters. Uh, I believe uh, they're these two right here. And we're gonna see once we uh, move these over to an electric generator, electric motors, uh, how does that affect uh, the operation of this? So from here, I just wanted to highlight uh, the hybridization of this particular circuit. So if you look down here, this, of course, is where the swing motor is. As I go back, you can see this is the only thing that's changed in this uh, second step of the example here. And what happened here is the gear train off of the engine is now driving a generator. Uh, it's feeding uh, uh, two lines to an electric motor, and that motor is then driving through a gear train 
of course, the upper structure of the excavator. Uh, in here is uh, the ultracapacitor shown here. And this is going to be the energy storage device. And it's not just you can you can, you know, again, any uh, energy storage device you'd like to place into a model, you can place it. Uh, Ameson has very extensive capabilities of working with batteries, et cetera. So it just doesn't have to be this. It can be, you know, whatever you really prefer to use. <laughs> so that's the only thing changed here. Uh, I'm just going to jump right into running the simulation. So simulation window comes up, runs to the simulation again very quickly. And again, just let's just take a look at the time. This one only took 14 sec seconds to, to simulate 20 seconds of digging. Let's go ahead and close this. And then let's take a look at, uh, again, this is the simulation is entirely uh, referenced by a solid model. And we can take a look at what does that solid model look like uh, for, the, for the digging sequence with the electrified swing motor. Uh, looks, you know, movement just like you'd expect. So I have, you know, I have good, good verification, state charts doing what it should be, all the controls uh, built into this to do the, the control of the dig is working as it should be. Movements are all correct. This all looks really fabulous. So it's kind of checks, take a look at, uh, when the plots, the thing that we're in, we're really concerned about here, of course, is fuel economy and total fuel consumption. So let's compare uh, between the first and second run here. You can see the first run, which was the red fuel consumption uh, for for this particular uh, cycle of activities shown red. Uh, for the updated model with the electrified uh, swing motor. You can see the fuel consumption did drop. Uh, and again, you remember from the sequence, it's really the first five seconds, it's uh, doing dig, boom up. And then from there, that's where it does the 90 degree swing, kind of holds as the, 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 the fuel consumption is about the same as uh, you, you empty the bucket into the pile. And then as you uh, go back to digging, and you turn back 90 degrees, you do have a, you know, this gap widens even more with the electric motor on the swing and uh, and then return to dig as, you know, you can see the the total fuel savings. And it's, it, and it's greater than 10%, you know, as far as this model is concerned. So walking through, that's just what's happening. Uh, there's other additional plots. Uh, as far as uh, motor generator energy, motor and generator energy, as far as uh, when uh, mechanical energy being used versus recovered energy, et cetera, uh, and a lot of different other information that can be pulled off of something like this, as far as, say, even uh, voltage and current. Uh, you know, depending on how you have the system design, uh, as far as what are your voltage spikes, you can do the exact same thing with hydraulic pressures, uh, as far as, uh, you know, what's the pressures uh, throughout the entire dig sequence. Just, you know, any parameter that you see uh, that was solved for the analysis, it's a simple drag and drop onto the screen to see the values and, and whether or not you know, it matches your expectations of how the excavator should be performing. So, I'm going to do just one additional uh, thing here. And this is going to be just going back into, of course, the power energy activity. Let's take a look at the top nine one once again. And of course, we have the cylinders. We didn't change anything there. We have the servo valve. 
But then again, remember we had at this point uh, last time in the last uh, solution, we saw losses in the swing motor and uh, swing motor valving showing up. Now we don't. Now we actually see the servo valves in the in the stick and also in the bucket as as the next uh, couple top losses. And then losses in a pump and in the swing brake. So again, uh, you can see the losses, you know, are are just jumped right over the swing section. Just looking at some additional, you know, the next components in line with the next highest losses for one complete dig cycle. And uh, of course, you know, these would all be, you know, options you could turn your attention to to even improving. Uh, the efficiency of one more dig cycle, or you're you're improving the efficiency of your excavator for dig cycles. So, okay. So from here, I'm going to go back to the presentation and just want to kind of go through. You know, we we discussed too that there are. Uh, Uh, you know, a lot of thing, in, a lot of a lot of different components and a lot of different um, model components in play for a complete excavator. But there's, you you have the ability, uh, and we talk about the scaling and and layers of complexity that you want to add to your model. The the one we just showed was relatively simple, but you can actually you know and and just start with you know say simple 1D or linear rotary mechanical representations, but you know, this particular example did have the 3D mechanical representation with animation, so you could double check and make sure the state uh, state control diagrams are behaving as they should, and you're getting uh, the correct correct dig sequence for a particular cycle to take a look at the uh, fuel flow. Uh, you also have the ability uh, to look at different complexities, uh, say in Hydraulic pumps, hydraulic motors, etc. Aimsim does have the capability to read in flow curves for your particular pump or motor, so you're not limited just to the library component. You can actually read in uh, if you do have the flow information uh, of a particular uh, a pump. You can read that into Aimsim, and it will be it will model that and work with your work with your overall system. With that particular component, uh, you know, there's there's a lot going on here, not just with with respect to, of course, hydraulics, but you know, there's there's heat exchangers, heat being uh, generated. How do you dissipate that heat? Aimsim does have the capability built into that to uh, model the heat exchangers, heat exchanger flow. From the hydraulic side, airflow from the uh, the cooling side, and then take a look at say, uh, you know, from the heat generated by the excavator, how does your cooling solution work, and are you getting enough cooling for your particular application? Uh, we did, of course, you know, there, there's just a number of different aspects and facets that you know can be simulated names, and we we just scratched the surface today. Uh, for a particular, you know, just really looking at simple hydraulics, um, but you, the world you, you can you can look at many different things. As far as uh, motors and engines, etc., uh, you know, the 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 complexity just increases. And we had a relatively complex motor today, based off of uh, some information that was already. Uh, available for this particular excavator, but you can start just with, you know, simple tabulated static models uh, for a very simple modeling, but then you can uh, go to mean value models that have uh, some additional information built into them, but then you can almost, you know, evolve into a crankshaft based level uh, physical combustion um, model for emissions and combustion analysis. Uh, with all the information as far as actuators, 
for you know integration and sensitivity analysis, et cetera. So, so it can be just you know a black box in your model that provides power down to uh, you know what's that combustion sequence look like, and you know what's the anticipated emissions, and and how does that look? And of course, there's you know the we've talked a lot about hydraulics, but there's a whole electric mechanic electromechanical simulation that could be also considered. Uh, we saw a little bit of you know you know even maybe some pilot uh, hydraulics with servo valves, but of course this today uh, can also be uh, electrics. So, uh, but you can work through. Uh, how does the excav excavator perform uh, as far as different app actuators and how does that change, say, the, dig the digging sequence and how does it change fuel economy? How does the move a valve? How does the uh, hydraulic flow change with that servo actuated valve? All these things can be uh, modeled and uh, shown with with Ameson. So. And again, too, you know, you're not just stuck in AIMSIM. AIMSIM is perhaps uh, one of the most, they've, they've really tried to uh, let it interface with a bunch of different tools as far as MATLAB Simulink, uh, code for, it's like C code for um, logic, uh, Python, uh, and then there's a bunch of other uh, major hardware in the loop platforms that you can interface it to as far as DSpace, LabVIEW, et cetera. So it's, once you do have these models, uh, you do have the ability to, um, if you say you're doing your control design in MATLAB and Simulink, uh, let that run your particular hardware model and uh, and see how, how that all performs. And that's before you, you know, build anything. Uh, you can you can really see how does the structure, how does the logic work uh, with your particular product. So, so that's all I have today.